Okay, welcome back. This is the next uh, episode in our character creation, and this time we are going to look at stats and how you uh, generate your stats. And um, as I said, there's three different ways of character creation. You've got your Street Rat, Edge Runner, and Complete Package. I'm going to be doing Complete Package, um, but I'm going to show you the Edge Runner and Street Rat variants as well. Okay, so what are the stats? Uh, I'm not going to cover them too much because I covered them in the uh, last video where I went through the character sheet, but very, very quickly you've got intelligence, willpower, cool, empathy, technique, reflexes, luck, body, dexterity, and movement. They're mostly self explanatory, but if you want any additional information on them, check out the character sheet one where I sort of go through what they do. But basically, they, they sort of apply their score to other roles whenever you're making ability checks and we'll cover how all that works whenever we get to the ability check uh, section. How you actually generate them, and you can see here there are three ways, and you will have a table like this, and this will uh, be the same for both Street Rat and Edge Runner variants. You have a table specific to a roll, which we'll see in a second, and you roll a d10. In the Street Rat uh, method, you take the column, or sorry, you take the row. So you can see here this person, uh, J, as I've said here, They've rolled a six, so they take this row that's been blacked out, and that's their stats. That's it, they're done. Easy as that. For a street rat, what you do is you roll a d6 for each stat. So in this case, if I was uh, rolling my tech, um, I would go to the tech table, which we'll actually go to now. So uh, you can see on the next page here, we've got Rocket Boy, Solo, Netrunner, and Tech. So there's different tables for each role, so find the table for your role. And then as uh, if I was doing the edge runner, uh, what I would do is I would roll for each stat. So in this case, I'm first rolling for intelligence. So that's eight. So I have an intelligence of eight. Now I do the same for reflexes. That's one, so my reflexes are seven. And I fill these out on the character sheet as I'm going. And you do that for each um, a column. So each stat, you roll a d10, and apply whatever uh, number it has associated to that. And that's it, it's as easy as that. Now, for uh, the complete package, it's a little bit different. So this is the complete package, and um, you, you'll you need to speak to your GM about what method they want you to use, because some of them may not want you to use the complete package method, some of them might want you to use the Edge Runner or Street Rat, or they might have pre-generated characters for you. So find out from your GM which one they're actually wanting you to use. Some of them may not have a preference, they might be like far away. But something that the GM will need to tell you is how many uh, stat points you start off with. So there's this table here, and you can see minor supporting character, starting, major, minor hero, major hero, all that good stuff. And it dictates how many start stat points you have. And you basically spend these on a one for one basis. So if you want one in body, you spend one stat point to put it into the body. And you just go through and apply them however you want. The only uh, stipulations to this is that a stat can be no higher than eight or lower than two. So you have to put two in all of your stats. Um, regardless of, of how good or bad you think your character is in them, the lowest it can be is a 2. So, um, and the highest it can be is an 8. Um, usually your uh, GM will pick a starting character because anything above and beyond that it then throws off the balance, especially if people are using the edge runner uh, technique, it then, it, it then skews the scales a little bit. So stereotypically you will have 62 points to spend in stats and it is just a one for one basis so you can just take a look and see what you want your character to have if we go to my character sheet now i've already filled this out there we are and so you can see i've got seven intelligence so he's pretty intelligent not the highest we could put in but you know, up there six reflexes so he's, he's pretty um uh, handy with guns and driving and things like that having grown up with nomads so it's understandable why you would have that also, whenever you're applying your statistics like this, um, bear in mind your life path that you chose before. If you're not sure what stats to put in, you can metagame it, so you try and make it so that your character is the best of that particular type that they may be, or you can roleplay it. So you can look at their life path and say, okay, well, what would they be good at? You know, given that they were, uh, you know, they grew up on the streets or they, you know, uh, did X, Y, Z. And that's sort of what I've done here. So you can see there, he's fairly smart. And that just comes from working with um, equipment and gear and being able to learn. His reflexes are, are quite quick. He grew up on the streets, so he had to know how to get run and gun. 
he uh, went then with a Nomad pack, so he learned probably how to drive quite well and built his reflexes from that. His dexterity, he's not that fit. He's not really someone who's running about a lot. Um, he, he's okay, he gets by, but he's definitely not that dexterous. His tech, technical ability is an 8. It's, you know, he's really good. He spent a long time working on these uh, cars and equipment and repairing them. You know, he's, he's good at, at his job. His cool though is really low, his cool is a three, he's not that social, you know, again he grew up on the streets so he didn't really talk to anyone, his family's missing, you know, so he's he's not that uh, good at communication and uh, dealing with people in such a way. His willpower, seven, this is mostly a mechanical thing, you know, that's, that's why I put it to seven, I had spur points. Luck, again, I just threw what I had left into luck. Movement, again I just set it as an arbitrary six because that's for movement purposes and uh, body six again this now this was a, a role-playing aspect because I figured it's going to be strong ish he's not going to be built like a, a brick toilet but he's going to be relatively strong because he's you know he's, he's been you know, lifting engines out of cars and things like that and trying to get a really stubborn rusty nut off he's got a bit of brawn to him but not much and empathy is eight and empathy is of eight because I want him to have a lot of cyberware <laughs> <laughs> uh, picture, you know, he's, he's, he's good with technology, he likes his tech, um, so I figure, I, I picture him with lots of like uh, cybernetic augments to make his life easier and maybe replaced a limb or two, you know, maybe he's got an, he had an arm trapped underneath a car and had to be cut off so he's replaced it with a cyber arm or things like that. So uh, that's why that's, I, I put that to an 8. Because your empathy is directly related to your humanity and that affects how much cybernetics you can get before you actually start coming to cyber psychosis and start going a wee bit nuts. Um, in here you can see this is our skills, we'll, we'll get to these in, in a bit. But you can see here this stat box and on this uh, PDF it automatically fills it out. Whenever you put a value into the stats it will uh, populate it in here for you. And that's because that's, um, that's your uh, part of your role. Whenever you make, say, make a concentration check and it's just as is, I, uh, I add a 7 to it. If I add some levels in it, I add those levels as well. But we'll, we'll cover that whenever we get to ability checks. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now, now that we've got our statistics, is get our derived statistics. So this is things that are byproducts of what our stats are. So uh, in this case, we're going to look at HP, your hit points, because it's a combination of your will and your, your body. And if you look here, there's a very lovely equation. That is your hit points are equal to 10 plus 5. Uh, times your body and will round it up. Don't worry about trying to do that equation because they have a, a very nice table here. Uh, the only things that you need to be aware of is that your seriously wounded threshold is half your HP rounded up and your death save is your body stat. So uh, if we go back we can see that my body is 6. So I know that my death save is also 6. Your hit points, there is this nice table that works it out for you. So if we go and check, we can see that my will is 7 and my body is 6. So my will is 7 there and my body is 6. So I have 45 hit points. Basically just map it across and where the two overlap, that is your hit points. So I have 45 hit points. Not terrible, not great. And then my seriously wounded is half that rounded up, which is 23, I believe. Okay, so that's our hit points. Moving on. Next one is our humanity, and your humanity is equal to your empathy times 10, effectively. So if you have you know, one empathy, you have 10 humanity, two is 20, three is 30, etc. So we'll fill that out. Mine is 80 out of 80. Your empathy and humanity are linked. So actually, if we go back to my character sheet here, I have 80 humanity on the button. If I drop down to 79 humanity, like that, my empathy would then become seven. Okay, it's as soon as it drops below the uh, 80 or 70 or 60 or whatever, it then becomes your empathy goes down by one. So that's something to keep in mind. So mine is not going to stay, my empathy is not going to stay at 80 for long because I fully, fully intend to get some cyberware, so it's going to drop down whenever we get to that stage. But for the meantime, it's 80 and eight. Now we're on to skills. There are several different types of skills. There are awareness, body, control, education, fighting, performance, ranged weapon, social weapon, technique, skills. What does that mean? Well, don't really worry about it for the meantime. 
but the one thing that is key to know whenever you are picking skills, if you are buying skills, there's a cost to them. If you have, uh, whenever you level up and you try and buy new points into skills, there can be a cost associated with them. And if we go back to my character sheet, we can see here martial arts has a times two beside it. And that means it costs two points to level it up. Basically means the more difficult a skill is to learn, so uh, let's say likes of demolitions, you know, there's a pretty technical skill, it takes a lot of effort to do, and if you do it wrong, you blow yourself up. Um, or don't blow up what you want to. So it can, it's a, a difficult skill as well. So that's something to be aware of. If it doesn't have a times two modifier beside it, it's just a straight up one point to buy when you buy them. But how do you get your stats in the first place? So everyone starts off with basic skills. So these must start at at least a value of two. If you think similar to your stats, where you know the lowest it could be is two, there are basic skills that everyone has to have, and they all have to start at level two. Um, and these are athletics, brawling, concentration, conversation, education, evasion, first aid, human perception, language, street slang, uh, local expert, your home, wherever it is you live, perception, persuasion, and stealth. So everyone, every character, regardless of who they are, has to have at least a two in those. You also get, um, it says here, as you can see, four points in their language related to cultural background. So if you remember before, um, I picked Spanish as my additional language. So I automatically get four free points into that uh, because I know that language from my background. So street rap method, picking from a template is exactly as it sounds, you have a table. This one here, we've got rocker boys, solos, net runners, techs, and med techs, and you pick your role. So whichever role you are, you then get those stats. You can see here we've got the ones that are in bold here. They are the basic stats, so they are all minimum of two, um, but they can be, as you can see, they have been increased on some on the tech and uh, on the net runner. You know they've got education up to six. Uh, first aid is at six. They've left you in perception at two. So you know you can increase these skills, but they have to be a bare minimum of two. And down here, the unbolded ones are uh, the ones that they've actually picked to actually put points into. If you're in a street rat scenario, you don't need to worry about it. You just need to copy these values onto your character sheet. Okay, so if you're an edge runner, you still work from that template. However, you get to pick how the actual points are distributed between them. So. As you can see, you get 86 skill points that you can spend, and um, you get to put them uh, wherever you like. It is a point though, again, th those skills, the basic skills have to be level two, that comes out of your skill points, and the four levels of language is free. So the four lang uh, levels for, uh, in my case, Spanish, um, does not come out of the skill points. Okay, so you, the, the language that you get from your cultural background is completely free, you get four points into that, no strings attached and then you have these 86 skill points to spend however you choose but these skills must be level two you must spend points to make these skills level two uh, and as you can see it says here again to reiterate any skills that are marked by times two cost two skill points so you can see here if um, i was doing the edge runner method i would go to tech skills and this gives me the list of skills that i then have and i just divvy up those points between them however I choose. Something that must be pointed out as well is that no skill can go higher than six or lower than two. So uh, especially whenever you're doing the edge runner method, you have to put two across the board as well as uh, these basic ones. Okay, complete package, which is what I'm going to be doing. And that is where you have the entire list of skills, uh, which if you're in the core rule book, it's a couple of pages back from this and you can pick whichever ones you want and put some points into them and uh, spread out uh, across your, your skill set. Again, the same applies, you must have your basic skills set to level two and no skill can be higher than six. Now, something that this doesn't state is that a skill has to be at least level two. Um, in all the previous methods, it says that the skill has to have a minimum of two in the edge runner method, you, know, you must have two in all those skills it doesn't state that here so you can reading this exactly as it is you can have it that you have a skill with one point into it however that's reading it exactly as it's written and 
me as a GM, just because of the way the previous ones are built, I would say that if you put a point into a skill, so you're you know, you bring you have a skill that is zero and you want to bring it up, I would stipulate that you have to bring it up to level two. So you can't have you know you can't take those 86 points and put one point in everything across the board. If you're putting a point into something, you have to put two points in. That is my rule. As far as it is written here, it does not actually say that. But just the way that the others are built, I, I sort of infer that, that that's maybe the way that it's meant to be. And that's the way that I um, stipulate that. So um, your GM will tell you if, if that's the way they're running it, they will let you know. Um, but if not, then yeah, you could probably put ones in, in everything. But I, I wouldn't. You end up as a jack of all trades, master of none. So you can pick from any of the skill sets, put some points into them. I'm going to do that on my character sheet now and uh, stick all of the, the points in, taking away from my 86 skill point pool. And uh, once we've got it done, I'll bring these back and let you see. So there we go, that's um, all of my skills picked. Uh, so you, uh, you can see on the character sheet that the uh, uh, basic skills are uh, put in bold so that you know which ones they are. Uh, makes it a bit easier to put out. Um, generally what I did whenever I was filling these out was I, I went through, put all of the basic stats at 2 um, and then just started throwing numbers in things that I thought would fit until I either ran out of stats or ran out of or ran out of skills or ran out of points. So basically I went through, picked all the skills that I wanted, that I thought I wanted and then with any remaining leftover skill points I you know I bumped them up a couple of points or something like that. Um, or maybe put you know, some points into a, uh, a low level skill that I thought oh, I might be okay at that. So as you can see, concentration I put up to 5, perceptions 4, basic stats are the same. And drive land vehicles, I mean he was with nomads for a while, so I figured he's probably picked up a few um, tips and tricks on how to drive a, a land vehicle. He's a nautical uh, engineer, so I'd say he probably knows how to uh, pilot sea vehicles fairly well, so put that to a 4. Education is six. He's you know uh, he's intelligent. He's able to learn things. Got the street slang is at two. Left it at two. The Spanish. So that's the free language that I got with the the four. Uh, local expert in your homes two as standard. Brawling and evasion as standard. Handgun I put as two. He's probably used to pulling a pistol out every now and again. Uh, heavy weapons none. Shoulder arms I put as a six because I, I I picture him holding like a shotgun or something like that and being. Yeah, pretty decent with it, especially driving around with nomads. So I uh, yeah, I put that up to a six. It's conversation, human perception, and persuasion, all just standard. And uh, air vehicle tech three, basic tech six, cyber tech five, electronics and security systems four. But as you can see, it's a plus two uh, skill, so it actually cost me eight points to get those four. First aid's two is standard, land vehicle tax six, you know he's working with nomads, he, he knows his, his uh, cars. Sea vehicle tech, this one I sort of skimped out on. It, it, it does state that he is a nautical engineer, so really this one should probably be higher. Um, but I, I put it at a two. Um, and weapons tech I put to a four. And that's it, that's it, we've got our skills. Uh, we're now ready to move on to the next thing, which is getting our gear, getting weapons and getting armor. And we'll do that in the next video.